in this difficult situation, how will the Lord arise? So I found this morning a very heartening, heartening revelation. The Lord was so tall. Every morning we tremble, holding our nation in the face of God. Sri Lanka's infections have not spread too much, but still we are concerned. We are 800 and about 830 today, maybe 835. Uh, many, about 235 have got healed and gone home. Yesterday it was 27 infections after which 25 came from the Navy camp that unfortunately got infected while serving the people. Uh, we are concerned, so we wake up every morning trembling, asking for help to hold a nation in the face of God and expect help from God. We bless our president every day for good wisdom, health, strength, comfort. And we bless the task forces, those who advise him, we bless our health services. We are not in a grumbling mode. We can't afford these luxuries of frustration, despondency, fury, froth, fumes. We can't afford those. So we just put all our energy on getting our nation back on track, back to health. That's how we live in Sri Lanka. I advise this to you also. Preserve your energy. Uh, don't believe the fake. And don't make fake. Fake has its own addictiveness. We'll come to that later. So there was this Lord was so tall. And his head was, I think, in the clouds or in the galaxies. Massive tall figure he is. Then I remembered he, uh, Isaiah 40, who, who laid out, laid out the heavens. And for him there is no weariness. Uh, yet, uh, it is how it says, uh, uh, why do you say, oh, where is justice? Have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth? Does not become weary or tired. Isaiah 40, 28. Does not become weary or tired. His understanding is inscrutable. That's his immensity and his transcendent, but he's immanent. He, he gives strength to the weary. I saw him while attending on the galaxies and whatever he does there with black holes and uh, light travel time and red shift and all that, whatever he does there. He also stoops immediately so easily to pick up his people, to get them from weariness, get them back into flight trajectory that he has for them, get them back into the place he wants to propel them push them up and the song came oh, you raise me up on your shoulders when the mount is too high you raise me up and I saw our sailor he's the eldest boy in our midst you know grew up without parents and I saw the Lord fashioning him for greatness I saw him doing that to uh, others as well at present in our church building, we have five young fellows, uh, those who follow in BQ and so on, trades and whatnot. Uh, some have already got jobs, thank God. But because of shutdown time, they are all indoors. Uh, but they helped me with these sessions. So I saw them, uh, the Lord so tall. And as the scripture describes, Isaiah 40, 28, do you not know how you, have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, does not become weary or tired. His understanding is inscrutable, but he's the same one. He gives strength to the weary, and to him who lacks might, he increases power. He picks us up from low down. I remembered Mary's Magnificat, I remembered Hannah's song. He stoops down to pick people up from the dust. Now he's working with the marvelous stars up there, stardust and all that. And then he stoops down to the real dust down here and he picks us up to make us greater than we can be. Will you say yes to this God, your Father? There's a time to share his nature with your friends and be absorbed in his nature and see dreams with him and have visions of him. 
he has his best interest in our in his heart our best interest and he has the best interest of his created world he created it he's the father of china he's the father of australia he's the father of north korea and of course he's the father of us he's the father of sri lanka I sometimes think he's the mother of Sri Lanka because we have so many romantic places and beautiful places. Yes, uh, so thank God. So Germany calls herself themselves Deutschland, fatherland, and many other people, nations call themselves motherland, isn't it? Yes. And verse 29, he gives us strength to the weary. Isaiah 40, 29. And to him who lacks might, he increases power. Youth. Though youth grow weary and tired, so th and, and really the globe has aged quite a bit, doesn't it? Surely the globe is past noonday. Global enterprise, the MMV Titanic Babyly car, the new name I found from Babel and Titanic, majestic merchant vessel. Endgame has begun and they are saying too much population and in fact even for millionaires to be rich that's not enough so multimillionaires dump the millionaires out it's dump and dot is the name of the game dump and dot you know with with uh, this protective personal protection equipment you are supposed to don and duff carefully put it away this is dump and dot so then the time comes from multimillionaires, caput. Billionaires are saying, you are, you are just shouldering us out. Finally, only the multi-billionaires that the world they plan. Shrinking resources, problems they created. How will the father redeem? How will the father redeem? You know, it's a time he's knocking on the door of every heart. Uh, the poorest Millionaires, multi-millionaires, billionaires, multi-millionaires, doctors, lawyers, heads of state, he's knocking on their heart. Uh, so we pray for our head of state every day, as I told you, for our health services. We thank God for our police and army who do such a lot. We thank. We thank God for them. As I said, we have no energy for fury, fume, frothing, criticism, frustration. We have no energy for that. We save our energy. I, I found this term, we, uh, this term, this, uh, we are the lifesavers, inspiration, global help uh, troops, L-I-G-H-T. And we are putting our uh, dinghy lifeboats out. They don't look nice. And the massive, majestic MV merchant vessel, Titanic Babelica is so big and so strong. But they are shaking, throwing people out. And we are picking people up. That's the Lord's salvation message. Uh, those who were young and robust and they followed the law of uh, the philosophy of Oliver Wendell Holmes, the American jurist, who said when the tough, when the going gets tough, I think tough get tougher. That's how the world said. And they are getting for survival of the fittest only. And the struggle for existence is showing up in a very bad, bad way. So which vaccine will be, who will uh, accept which vaccine? Which will get globally promoted? The academically done Oxford vaccine, which will take time. Or a quickly done, done multi-strain vaccine in Italy or some place where funds come from who knows where. So the big, big battle is on, even among the vaccine makers, between big pharma and vaccine makers. Those who would want to get a drug through and those who say, no, 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 it's a vaccine. So they were all in the same syndicate so far, but now. Uh, so it is time for the prudent, the good Samaritans, the light, uh, the lifesavers incorporated to be ready to pick up, pick up and the Lord will give us strength. So that's what we, I saw. Lord was so high and tall and mighty, but he picks up everyone's destiny, the fatherless, the orphan, the widow. He, he bends low and picks up everyone's destiny. And he has such a vision for our height and our stature. He never gives up on it. The good and perfect gift, the good gift that he wants to make perfect in us, he never gives up. He wants to work with it relentlessly. Though we give up, our flight trajectory trajectory sometimes just gets distracted and we see looking for our glory, but then we land on our face, he gets us back. 
isn't it? He gets us back and he keeps working with us and I saw the strong wings coming for the Daniel in place of governance and I saw him from his young days, yes, when he was just a very young air pilot and the Lord said this was his trajectory every time I, he flew, I flew with him. So for you, you may be you may have come from a small place to a very influential place or you may be still struggling in the small place. Wherever you are, God still flies with you. God still flies for you. He brings his wings and he brings his winds to take you, the glided winds, to take you to where he has for you. This is a time like that. So he says, uh, Vigorous young men stumble badly. So it is the, the, those who are robust and knew exactly what to do. This is the time to return. Come home. Come home. Ye who are weary, stumbling, come home. There is a home. So I was meditating on the global culture of rough, tough, survival of the fetus. Uh, you, you work for profit. You change. Uh, whatever that needs to, you affiliate a line with where the profit is most and then there is the home culture, family culture of a fabric of relationships where you are into investments and of course you will have your dividends. You are not into rapacious profit. So you have a family of friends, your own family, wife, lifelong children and you're into generations. So can you see the clash of the global culture versus the God created home and family culture? It's a real battle. It's a real battle. Don't get misled by the fake the news that goes around that tries to hide the battle and say all is hunky-dory. All is not hunky-dory. Science is not deciding the best for us. These are not the days of Louis Pasteur. These are not the days of Alexander Fleming, who, who got the best antibiotic ever possible, the penicillins. Because they work on the bacterial wall, and human beings don't have a cell wall. We, we just have a, a membrane around ourselves. So that's the best way of antibiotic possible. So today I was thinking of this. And I just thought we, we really need to keep our family boundaries protected. I did this yesterday also. Sexual boundaries protected. Health boundaries protected. Take care, take care what you love inside your body. Take care, take care. And don't believe the fake. You know, it's a fake addiction that begins from very young days. When children are made to make believe the screen, you grow with thinking what the screen says, the monsters, the spook, the magic, you know, the Spider-Man and the Superman and aliens, monsters, the battles, then the digital war games, dead to the death. These are the things that have formed a generation. God has reprieved. He stoop, his head is, he's so tall, but he stoops down immediately. Moment you cry, Father, our Father who art in heaven, help me. He immediately is there to pick you up and to take you up into the Savior's heart, Savior's bosom. Then Christ becomes Lord of your life. Christ becomes shepherd of your life. Christ becomes Savior of your life. So Isaiah 40, 31, Yet those who wait for the Lord will gain new strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. That's right. So the Daniel is placed in that position and he, God gives him those eyes eyes with which you see the commanding eyes see the problem and you see through to the uh, solution that's what a Daniel is like yes then uh, I saw so many birds you know so there were the, the birds who are making nests some birds make messy nests so the, the, the crow for instance we have lots of crows in Sri Lanka they make messy nests then we have a bird that fellow does not make a nest he uses it uses the crow nest yes it comes during this April time and every morning we hear that that one making this uh, sound I forget its name in our language it's called koha and he makes a koho koho kind of sound 
He does not make his own nest. So people have been brought up in different nests. Some were brought up without father, without mother. But God makes a nest. I think God makes a nest when you are 14 years old, passing 13. God makes a nest. He takes it over from the parents. Even when you have parents, he has to. Because from 14 to 17, you have a flight trajectory, study trajectory, curricular trajectory. Don't spoil it with digital rubbish. I have written on this. I have many clips on it. If you want to get any kind of clip, please send a WhatsApp to plus 94 77 49 59 214. And you can go to my blog, Dr. Lalit Mendes, blog.wordpress.com. Uh, also, we have a Facebook, our church Facebook is Brookside Colombo. Then we have a empathic learning center, Child Star, empathic learning center. Then we have digital science. We have a lot of Facebook pages, different things for different purposes. Uh, so the Lord was speaking up. And then we saw, I saw these different birds making different nests. And we have a particular bird, uh, it, it has a proper name. We call it Vadukurula, that means it, 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 it's like a carpenter thing. He makes a very proper nest like that. So each one's upbringing and how your home nest was, God knows. From there he starts making the nest he wants you to have if you say yes to him. So age 8 is a good age for a child to come to the Lord, definitely by age 8. 8 years, yes. You can receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit also at the age of 8. And then by 14, God is uh, showing you up what, fa what facilities, what brain tracks He would like to grow in you. So don't muddle your track formation, your empathic executive track formation. Don't muddle with the pixel screen. Too much of the pixel screen, you give up the executive empathic and you go down to the bottom up regulation of thrill, peril and whatever comes, whatever comes. You are geared by sound and light and thrill and sensation, whatever comes. That is through the amygdala, hippocampus and hypothalamus. But we should live from prefrontal cortex here, top-down regulation. That's a technical subject. So this nest, different nests, and they have a different beaks. Then they have a different flight styles. But the Lord takes over. At 14, he takes over. At 17, he remakes the nest. And then by 24, he has given you wings. And God has to give you wings also to take you to where he wants to take you to. So share this clip with all young people. I think from the age of 12, they can understand this clip. Uh, because it was such, a, such an amazing mission, I cried quite a bit, seeing how he picks up people from very low down. You know, he never says, I am too up there, too, too much up there. No, no. He says, I'll immediately come and pick you up and take you to the best place I have for you. That's what he wants to do. Take you to the best place I have for you. Please tell this to your daughter. Please tell this to your son. That And, and you take heart, father, mother, where you made a mess of the nest. Or you did, you thought you were doing your best, but it was not good enough or it went awry some way, something wrong. T take heart. God remakes the nest. That's right. He can. He can do it even retroactively. Better be prospective that you plan and make nests even when you are a spiritual father. You have to keep readjusting the nest because the size of the eaglets change and they, what they want to, they want to change. So, but God's nature is this that he makes the nest and adjusts it and then he allows you fly off. He likes to guide you, give you a charter plan, will give you a compass and give you the map. And if you would fly with God to where he has for you to fly, you'll do well. Otherwise, you'll have destruction, distractions and rarely destruction. It will be terrible. Uh, so then again he says it's nesting time. Come back. I have prepared a nest for you to fly again to the next height. So it's a case of nesting, flying to God's pattern, plan direction, the nesting. So he prepares the nest. So if you're a dad and a mom, you have to plan like that. If you're an apostle, prophet, pastor, you have to plan like that. For spiritual life, of course, you need God's direction very carefully. As people grow uh, into God's calling, you need God's direction carefully. How you, what advice you give them? How can you make the nesting again? 
so in this time of uh, COVID and shutdown, uh, most of our groups are in Zoom sessions and they are finding koinonia, learning of each other, learning of Christ. We do this every week, that's right, every week. Some of us are in leadership, we are in a weekly group and in a bi-weekly group. I'm in about three, four leadership groups because our work is extensive around the island of Sri Lanka. It takes time, it takes effort, it takes heart, but you grow with it, you grow with it. You are never a leader, just leading. It, it, you are in a yoke of fellowship with Christ. So Christ walks you through and you're shoulder with another person and you're walking together uh, treading God, God's ground, God's harvest, gathering it up, and, and the other's shoulder movements, then you are molded in it. Never be a lone ranger. Our shoulders are on it, our hearts are on it. We have put our common hand to God's common plow. That's the work of the Lord. And then yesterday we saw the tent for worship and the tent for work. So God's plow works with mission, and then we also have the worship part of it. In all these things we find fellowship, koinonia. So, yet those who wait for the Lord will gain new strength. They will mount up with wings as eagle. They will run and not get tired. They will walk and not become weary. Now, the Bible has many times the expression of eagle. We'll look at few more, but Bible also has the mother hen. Jesus said, I desire to gather you up as the hen gathers. To Jerusalem, he said it, but you would not know that. So that action also we must learn. Uh, many people think flying like an eagle, but there's a mothering like a mother hen. And then there's a dove with silver wings and moving among the, 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 the army saddlebags with a golden breasted uh, feathers. I'm speaking from Psalm 68 verse 13. So it's a dove alert. We saw this dove and the dove is alert. She looks like this, she looks like that. Dove is alert. Dove is not dumb. Dove is alert. And she's looking for to take the message. She knows where to take the message and go. So many different expressions of mother birds and today I saw many of them. Uh, so and the Lord has a calling for you like that. How you make that nest of a dove nest of a eagle and you know so a little more things about the eagle from Deuteronomy 32 11 Exodus 19 so where are we now what are we doing this today midday broadcast and where are, what are we doing we want to see the Lord tall and high we want him to come down and pick us up from the struggle we are in we will confess our trouble honestly to him then he says I will take you to this nest now, he might have to start from scratch somewhere. Don't say, I need a bigger nest and a better positioning. Wait patiently. Then when we have learned the art of nesting, been trained there, he helps us fly. And then there's another nesting time. Now, God may catch it up for you. What you haven't done in 10 years, he can, he can quicken up. But allow him to take you from nest to nest. Will you say it me? Nest to nest. Flight to flight. That's how we are made. That's our God. He will never say I'm too busy. They are in the galaxies or in the clouds. He does all that. He has put angels to get the clouds moving, water cycle, all that, the lightning on the right time, all that. He gives lightning to the depths of the sea so that there will be enough electron, electrons, photons going there to get the sea vegetation to do the photosynthesis. God is doing all this use. He's the best scientist ever. God has designed it all. This. So most of the seabed vegetation get their oxygen from, they get their photons, light energy from lightning that comes into the seabed. Yes, he has done all this. Wonderful God is our God. Uh, so uh, we agree to from nest to nest. A little more from uh, Exodus 19 at Sinai, he said it. So many things he said at Sinai. Moses take it up in the book of Deuteronomy before his departure to be with the Lord. So uh, Exodus 19, 4 has this. Uh, 
You yourselves have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagle wings and brought you to myself. So that might be the initial flight, isn't it? Out of Egypt, out of our ways. What, you remember the effort? We didn't want to leave that. We thought it's forever. But he, he managed to, managed to birth us and put his eagle wings and we got born again, born again and brought you to myself out of Egypt brought you to myself okay then Moses recalls uh, in Deuteronomy 32 11 Deuteronomy 32 11 so if we are stuck in any one place let him make the nest and take you again so please give enough time for nesting because some of us don't like nesting time obviously lockdown time is nesting time I'm also a very operational person I want to be moving but in this time God said the moving is inside the nest attend to the nest then will come the flight time so some are very quick at flight please take time for nesting some are just waiting now you must fly also and get to God's next destination next part of the destiny that God has for us we have to work it out with him so 32 11 that's a famous verse about the eagle now remember it's not only eagle movement there's a mother hen time. Many people find it very difficult, you know, to be the mother hen. They want to fly high all the time. But understand, God was hovering over the entire creation at the beginning of time. And there it's what the mother hen does, the wombing thing over the chaos. That's what he was doing, over the disorder. And he's the dove at times. So he has given different, different expression how the stalk does it and so on. Uh, 32, 11. Like an eagle, Deuteronomy 32, 11. Like an eagle that stirs up its nest, he hovers over its young. He spread his wings and caught them. He carried them on his pinions. Very lovely language, isn't it? Pinions are those strong eagle wings that lock together in flight. Yes, they can. They fly into the storm. Eagle knows inside the storm is safety and he uses the storm to fly higher you have heard all this you have heard all this uh, just before that he found him in a desert land if you are feeling like that and in the howling waste of a wilderness what covid is what a waste of a wilderness isn't it so please tell your friends to read revelation 13 about the mark that is coming and how god will protect and revelation 18 8 that a plague and a pestilence in one day one hour shut up economies and how will God arise out of it how will God help you to arise so see this he found him in a desert land in the howling waste of a wilderness he encircled him it took a little time isn't it we, we were not easy to be picked up he encircled him he cared for him he guarded him as the pupil of his eye he does all this and the Lord alone guided him and there was no foreign God with him and then what does he do verse 13 Deuteronomy 32 30 he made him ride on the high places of the earth that will come but I love this encircling the Lord bearing you up in the nest please agree to that also and he ate the produce of the field and he made him suck honey from the rock oil from the flinty rock yes so uh, we, uh, and take the warning of uh, Deuteronomy 30 to 15 Jeshurun grew fat and kicked we will not do that you are so we don't want to go that way the Lord will keep us safe uh, any more for the, I think that's enough of the eagle I want to take you to Psalm 116 it was such a blessed Psalm I was I, I, I felt very you have heard the word ravish by his love and I cried and I saw so many boys with no father, no mother, God picking up and taking them up. And then he comes to Psalm 116, amazing the way God fashions and positions the scripture of the day. My wife and I, we read 10 chapters of the Bible every day. It is breath to us, it really feeds us, nourishes us and it takes us forward. And now this is today's psalm meditation. Unbelievable. 
I love the Lord because he hears my voice and my supplication. But he has inclined his ear to me. This is what I saw that he, he was so tall, he came down and he said, you also just stoop down when people need help. I shall call upon him as long as I live. The cause, now see the time. Cords of death encompassed me. They're quite like COVID, isn't it? Terrors are sheol came upon me. There's a fear of death. I knew, where does this come from? People who had this throat feeling of COVID, they say, it is terrible. It's like strangulating. And it comes in the night, you feel scared. Thank God we have prayed for a couple of them like that. I have, and they recovered and some were not even COVID positive. But there's a phenomenon going on. And I want to report to you a young doctor in UK. UK does not give any medicine. They're waiting for the clinical trials to prove it. You know UK, uh, right usually, but then these are not no usual times. Uh, but US is using hydroxychloroquine extensively because the president pushed for it. President didn't push for it blindly because two well-known French professors from the Marseilles University of Marseilles National University, Prof. Medicine and Prof. Pharmacology, they did the trial. Now they have treated over 2,000 people consecutively, 91% healed, effective, no cardiac events at all. It is reported. If you want the link, I can send you. And you are wondering then why, why isn't everybody prescribing hydroxychloroquine? Because it's cheap. It's unbranded. Nobody will earn any money. Remdesivir, intravenous, unproven, a lot of side effects, but then it'll earn money. So this is the patent game. Who chooses what, why? It's a subject of pharmacology. I will do, uh, today I think I will do a midday broadcast about the next developments. You can follow it through. After this, I go into the vernacular, same message, and then I start the, the more scientific one. But we must get the spiritual first. So there are cords of death, you know what they are. It's as if from far away someone is pulling you, they put a noose and pulled you. That's what COVID was, isn't it? There are many other things like that. It, it was a long cord, alcoholism, heroin, pornography, gambling, long cord, you're getting pulled by it, isn't it? Sometime back you got caught, and then for a long time, you're getting pulled by. So this, uh, during this time, we must see that God, God cuts off that. The Holy Spirit will cut off the cords of entanglement. Death encompassed me. Terrors of Sheol. That's the underworld, the other world, unseen world, the spook. Yeah, that, that's a terror. That's a dark, gloomy feeling. God keep us safe. Then I found distress and sorrow. I'm reading Psalm 116. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. Oh Lord, I beseech you, save my life. Anyone in an intensive care unit can call upon the name of the Lord. I have told you for this disease, it's not ventilators that will be helpful. It is oxygenators that they need to get high pressure oxygen soon as possible. Otherwise, they get hypoxic and, and the blood begins to coagulate, a coagulopathy, microemboli. That means it's, many, many organs of the body can be involved. Before that, give them oxygen fast. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Yes, sir, God is compassionate. The Lord preserves the simple. This is how I felt. This is what I saw. I was brought low and he saved me. I was surprised when I read this. As he was high and tall, how he stooped down to save me and pick me up. Uh, our God is command. The Lord preserves the simple. I was brought low and he saved me. You know, it's, it's easy to preserve the simple, isn't it? Because the heady, high-minded intellectuals have such a lot of knowledge and when the Lord is reaching out, their head may get Maybe make, make it too big. I was brought low and he saved me. Return to your rest, O my soul. For the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. Three things. You have rescued my soul from death. Let everybody who come through this know that. Two, my eyes from tears. And he has rescued my, my feet from stumbling. Rescued is the main verb. My soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. What a great God. What a great God. Uh, tears, you know, tears. Uh, stumbling means when we might have got deceived. Two, we might have got distracted. Three, we didn't see the trap or the stone on which we stumbled. Four, we just feel tired. We struggle hard financially, health-wise, issues-wise, 
relationships wise so you can stumble on different things isn't it yeah stumble but god saves rescued my soul from death my eyes from tears my feet from stumbling i shall walk before the lord in in the land of the living verse 10 116 verse 10, i believe what i said i am greatly afflicted i said in my alarm what shall i render to the lord for all his benefits towards me so now from verse 12 the recovery is beginning moment reprieve comes restoration is coming we say lord how can we reciprocate how we will give our best energy for the lord and his purpose we did this some time ago we gave 90% to ourselves our energies 10% to god post covid time we'll have to give 51% to god and 49% for our pursuits good pursuits not bad ones but the ratio will have to drastically change if you try to keep the status quo and go to the post covid world you will be defeated please agree to this what shall i render to the lord for all his benefits towards me during covid time i shall lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the lord i shall so first thing thank god for your salvation offer it to someone else this is the time call friends neighbors relatives whoever your contacts are please send them these clips i have ones that are completely meant for new people who are new to the gospel so when you are sending your whatsapp to plus 94774959214 you have to itemize medical medical science ones new people one or veterans we can send all kinds i shall pay my vows to the lord so second thing is we check back what is it that we kept a miss we promised and we didn't do please learn to tithe unto the lord give more than the offering give more than that because we are new testament people i shall pay my vows to the lord the time wise energy wise strength wise oh may it be in the presence of his people and so you know the importance of the presence of god's people uh, now get into a zoom group cell group a cell group has a cell reader please don't be in isolation and when worship is possible physically coming together is possible do everything to physically come together that's the meaning of oh may it be in the presence of the lord presence of all his people that is important to god's heart we pray that very quickly god's people will be gathered together in our nation yes precious in the sight of the lord is the death of his godly ones now this is true for someone dying but there's another dying now to get into resurrection mode what is it that in you has to die no that when you say i'm ready lord i surrender all all to thee my precious savior i surrender all whenever someone says i surrender god immediately stops everything and thinks it's very very precious precious in the, in the sight of the lord is the death of his godly ones physically of course as well as the spiritual laying down i'm ready to go to i'm ready to be crucified with christ then the lord takes it as a very precious treasure that's how nations are saved not by the multitudes but by those who gave their all those who gave their all that's right oh lord surely i am your servant i am your servant the son of your handmaid you have loosed my bonds in every way we will serve him all my talent all my time all my money i shall pay my vows to the lord oh may it be in the presence of all his people repetition gets important in the course of the lord's house in the midst of you o jerusalem praise the lord god bless you god keep you mm-hmm.